Hello and welcome to another Beehive integrations guide where we're going to cover how to implement RSS feed to post features with Webflow. At the end of this video, you'll be able to integrate your Beehive publication with Webflow, Webflow collections, which will allow you to populate your Webflow website with Beehive publication posts. This is used most often if you have a blog on your Webflow site that you want to populate with content from Beehive and you want to retain customization uh, that Webflow is so well known for while still sending your newsletter to your subscribers through Beehive. In addition, uh, this setup will automatically update your Webflow site with your future Beehive posts. And lastly, we're going to cover how to add custom styling to your Webflow blog so that when you pull in your Beehive posts, you can uh, set the custom styling to make the posts look exactly the way that you intend. A little bit of background before we get started. To complete this implementation, uh, you'll have to have a Zapier account. We're going to use a Zapier Zap to uh, move the publications from or the posts from your Beehive publication to your Webflow site. Uh, and then just a word of caution that this works best when you're starting your publication. Uh, and that's because the trigger we're going to use fires only when new items are added to the RSS feed. And so uh, the what that means is that you won't be able to easily backfill posts if you have you know a library of uh, Beehive posts that you're looking to, to migrate. There is a way and we'll cover it in the video. It's just uh, fairly time intensive. So without further ado, we're going to get started. So the first thing we want to do is go to our Beehive account. We'll click into settings, click into RSS, and we're going to make sure that this is turned on so that we can access our RSS feed. The next thing we're going to do is jump over to Z uh, Zapier and we're going to uh, select from, we'll go back once, one page real quick. Um, we're going to select from the triggers, uh, the RSS app by Zapier, and the trigger event will be when there's a new item in the feed. We'll hit continue. We'll drop in our feed URL. There's no username or password you need to worry about. And then Essentially, we can just use this one. There's not a reason to choose another one. Uh, and then we can test this trigger. We can pull in uh, a post. You can view different ones here. But uh, you're going to see all of this data coming in from your RSS feed. Perfect. The next step, we're going to have to have some stuff set up in Webflow. So we're going to select Webflow from this breakdown. We're going to have the action be to create an item, which is going to add a new item to a given collection. Hit continue. You're going to log in with your Webflow account. And now we're going to set up the action. So this is going to take a little bit of customization on the Webflow side of things. So you can select your website, which is this is the test site we're using. The next step is we're going to require that we have a collection set up. So we're going to jump into Webflow and cover how we start and set up a collection. So once we're in Webflow, this is just the basic editor that we have set up. We're going to go to Collections. And if you don't have one set up, you can create a new collection. We created one for this tutorial. So we have it set up here. I'm going to click into the settings so we can see all of these settings that you'll set up the first time you go through this. So the name of the collection is, is, you know, is up to you, as is the collection URL. This just impacts how the posts will show up in the URL structure. And so this is really where we want to uh, provide some customization. So there's a couple fields that you know are already provided. You can hop into these and change their names and, and such. But um, we're going to want to make sure that we have the following custom fields. So the basic info, this is going to be the title. This is just the, uh, the URL if you want to set something custom. But then we're going to need to have these following custom fields. A content field, your post summary, where the description will go your main image, your thumbnail image, and these will be populated by the image from Beehive. Um, we don't have the, the feature to set it featured, but you'll add also an author field and a date published field. So once you have each of these set up, and just uh, says, as a little side note, super easy to set these up. You'd go in here, select your field type, 
Um, once you do that, you can set the label and save it. And now it'll show up. So once we've gotten these pieces of data set up, we're going to map them uh, to the data we're pulling from our RSS feed using Zapier. So pause the video here. You can look at what we've set up and you know copy the names, just figure out how we're going to do the um, you know, the different uh, data types. And when you're ready, you can press play and continue. So jumping back to our, to the Zapier integration, we're going to select our collection from this dropdown list. And then within each of these fields, these are being pulled in from the custom fields that we created, as well as the default fields that were available. So starting from the top content, we're going to select raw encoded down here, which is going to be the HTML for the actual post. Post summary, we're going to drop in raw description. Under featured, you can set this to true or false. This is if you set it to true, it's going to make whichever post is you know pulled most recently the the featured one. Under author, we can collect raw creator. So this pulls in a field for you to set for author. Slug, I we didn't mess with this, so you can set this if it's important, but you can also leave it blank. And then uh, if you want to publish it, have it set to publish, um, you can set this to true, but you know, by default, we set these to draft. Um, but if you want everything to just publish automatically, once you have your styling and everything set up, you can flip this to true. And then of course, archived, you want that to be on false. Otherwise, it'll, it'll be archived when it sends. So we're going to send this test. Um, we're going to retest and review. So this is going to pull in another post. So we'll now have multiple posts in our web flow and perfect. It was sent to Webflow 10 seconds ago. So if we would go over here and we refresh, and we hop over to our collections. You'll now see that this was the original we had, and now we have a second one. So this is where I mentioned that if you have content you want to backfill, you may be able to do it this way using this test feature where you can just retest. You can select different items and then retest them. How I would do that is basically go into this first section, select an additional item. You can load more. Um, and you know, I think your mileage may vary in terms of like how you'll how many you'll be able to load or pull in, um, but you'll be able to do that that way. And you may only be able to do a couple, but you can get some some filled in there. All right. So at this point, we're we're really pretty much done in Zapier. Your connection is set up when a new post is added um, to your Webflow, or sorry, when a new post is added in Beehive it will create a new item in your Webflow collection. So let's jump over to Webflow now to get this last step done. So as you can see in the editor, all of this content is being pulled in appropriately. This is the post that we created um, from uh, Beehive. You can see that all of this stuff is being pulled in. Post summary, this is the description. This is the content. Um, the only thing that is a little bit weird is because it's pulling in this publish on beehive uh, snippet. This is going to look kind of funny when you when you publish it, as you'll see in a second. So feel free to delete it or keep it, style it, um, what have you. So we're going to now publish this and see what it looks like live. So if we go back to here, we can select from our pages our blog template. And this is where we're going to set the styling for all of these blog posts. So this is the one we just pulled in. It's pulling in the you know, cover image. It's pulling in the description right here, the title, the name, the content, and then this publish and beehive. So as it stands, this is working exactly as intended. What we're going to do now is look at how we can now customize you know, this to make it look the way you might want it to. And this will just be a very surface level um, description, but essentially when you create a new item, so you can pull in a header 
widget within Webflow using this window on the side, a heading, and you can select you know, the heading that you want it to be. Once you pull that in, you'll be able to select to get the text from this collection, and then you can choose which text you want. So in this case, what we could do is go over here to styles, and you could update the H1 header style to look, make it look exactly the way that you want it to look. And then in here, it's going to pull from the title. And so this will always be styled the way you want it to do, want it to be. And we're going to go through the rest of that process all in all these places. So for the text block, this is the description. We could, uh, you know, add class, you know, call it description. It's going to look like that. Um, image, we have this pulling from the thumbnail image. We can give it a custom description. We can get, uh, if you do have alt text, text set, you can set it here as well. Uh, we have the author set is this heading and then the content set to this rich text block. So if you have a developer, if you have a designer who's doing all the styling, it, we make it super easy for you to pull in all of these things. And then last but not least within the content blocks, we have various, uh, our HTML set so that you can create custom CSS classes in order to really make the rich text look exactly like you want it to. So just as an example, I'm going to show you what the encoded content looks like here in Zapier. But you can see that when we pull this, we have these different classes set. So the overall class is Beehive. We have a body class, a paragraph class, um, you know, and so forth. So if you have a designer who's really looking to customize this to the nth degree, we can actually hook into these classes that are going to be pulled into your publication in order to get very granular styling of your publication within Webflow, because now you don't have to just rely on the you know, pure uh, just default styling that the rich text is going to pull in you can use, you know, the, the beehive class to, to style, you can, you can set the custom style. So that, I know that was a lot, uh, some very dense information. If you have any questions or, you know, are seeking a little bit more guidance on how to do anything with this integration, please leave us a comment below, uh, in this video and we'll, we'll be monitoring those and get back to you, but hopefully this is a, a good start for helping you integrate your Beehive publication with Webflow. We look forward to seeing what you create. We look forward to growing with you. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day.